This is our Rock Island Tactical 2011. This is the 45 caliber handgun that we were running side by side, if any of you were following our Gun Bully segment, with the Glock 21. We were basically running them through a series of tests, uh, running them, dragging them down behind a vehicle on an asphalt road, running them down a dirt road, threw them in a pond. Uh, then we blew them up with two pounds of Tannerite. Well, the Glock 21 frame is still AWOL. We found the slide, but we still have yet to find the frame. So we're trying to continue on with the Gun Bully segment with the Rock Island 1911, or 2011. We stopped using the Chip McCormick 10 round magazines because apparently the Rock Island does not like them. Okay guys, we're out here continuing our Gun Bully segment. We just got through putting this thing in ice. We froze in a block of ice, been frozen about two or three days. Hells. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take it out Come on up here, Cole, and get a nice close-up of what we got in there. We've got our 1911 in the block of ice. We put the bore snake into the actual barrel to try to keep it full of, uh, or at least keep the ice out and keep it full of something else besides ice. Once we blow this thing out, or bust it out rather, um, we'll pull that out and then we'll fire the gun. What we're going to do is we're actually going to fire it out of there with a Remington 870 shotgun. Now you may be wondering, first of all, why a shotgun? Well because it's better than just busting it out. It's a little bit more theatrical, if you will. But, why the Remington 870? This is gonna be one of our next Gun Bullies guns. So, we're introducing this gun into the Gun Bullies segment by actually blasting this gun out. And once this one stops doing what it's doing, Chad, then we're gonna go ahead and start with the Remington 870. Yeah, uh, this ought to be an interesting test. We do have one more, or maybe one more, plus some other tests we That's got right. planned for this gun too, but we're just bringing in the Remington to kinda tie the two together and we'll eventually lead into the Remington. But we aren't done with the Rock Island yet. We got a few more things up the sleeve for it. I mean, I think we're gonna to be to the point where we might not be able to safely hold it and shoot it. We might <laughs> have to right. vice it, but uh, we're gonna run it till it, uh, see what it can take. Yeah, we're well, gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna set this thing out here. We're gonna blast that ice real quick and then we're gonna to try to take it out and fire it. Now, instead of taking the easy way out and protecting the gun with the thicker layer of ice, we decided to shoot on the thinner side where the gun was closer to the bottom of the ice. Three, two, one. From a distance, the pistol looks somewhat intact and still frozen. <laughs> the other side's work. There you go. Oh. The shotgun round we had used was a Remington single-op buckshot, and while many of the pellets hit the slide in the frame, one of them actually made a little bit of an indenture on the opposite side of the ejection port of the slide. Let's take a look at this thing real quick. Here, let me hold this, see if you can pull that out. More monkeys humping a football. The boar snake was frozen solid inside the barrel, so we needed to throw it in some warmer water to free it up real quick because we could not pull this thing out. Now, while the bore snake did remain frozen oh. solid, the warmer right. water did allow it to at least be removed from the All barrel. Right. Oh. <laughs> oh, look here. Look where a pellet hit on the uh, slide stop. See it bent it up? It's bent up a little bit. There were also several pieces of lead from the buckshot that were jammed between the slide stop and the frame. That lead being jammed in there was not good. Not only would it not allow our slide to come backwards, but it also wouldn't, and you'll see this later, would not allow rounds to cycle properly in the handgun. It's dented. But we felt like it still might be able to fire in spite of some of the damage the it received. Like that, Pellet hit right there. And I don't know if you can see the shadow inside where it hit. It's right on this side is where the uh, pellet hit. Single lot buckshot. And of course, definitely one hit right there. There. There, 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 there. Five of them hit. One, two, three, four, five, six of them hit. And, and looks like seven one right there. there. Yeah, well, that might be that one. There, 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 there. Seven of them hit. Surprisingly, though, after being shot at maybe a distance of 10 feet with single lot buckshot, this Rock Island 1911 tactical still seemed to cycle okay. All we really needed to do was clean some of the things up that were slowing the slide down. Right there. It splattered down into the uh, slide stop. That's some of the lead from the single lot buckshot that stuck down underneath that slide stop. Let me try to pry that out. If we pry that out, I think this thing will fire. As you can see, that lead under that slide stop had this thing in a death grip. Let's see if I got 
Uh, hold that. Let me go grab a screwdriver. Meanwhile, Chad busted out his prison shank and went to town on this thing and got most of the lead out. Can you get it? I think it's just residue more so than any damage. I think it's lead. Yeah, it's lead from the buckshot for sure. There you go. Clearing most of that lead definitely made a difference. This thing definitely cycled a little bit easier, but it still had some of it that was jammed inside there that needed to come out. But we were determined to test fire this thing. It was time to put some rounds in it and see what it could do. All right, let's see. Yep, loaded. See if this thing will fire. But right before we were about to shoot it, we noticed something glaringly obvious that I can't believe we hadn't seen before. You know what? The plunger <laughs> tube had been blown off the we gun. Got our, I just noticed something too. While I try to put it on safety, notice the plunger tube is missing too. See the plunger tube? I don't know which one hit it or if another round might have hit on top or if that round or that piece of uh, uh, buckshot is what knocked it off, but the plunger tube is missing because see how the slide just slides up and down or the uh, safety just slides up and down. There's no plunger tube or plunger to hold it in place. And I'm sure there are some other things that probably won't be happening correctly because the plunger tube also pushes forward on the slide stop. Let's go now. Kids, don't try any of this at home. While we did inspect the gun for any real terminal Good. damage, it's not a scientific Good. test. We don't know if this thing will fire Good. properly or if it will injure us. But it does fire. Did it cycle one? Nope. Remember that lead that was stuck in the slide stop? We went back later and found even more of it that was still jammed in there. And that was keeping the slide from cycling rearward. Chad, grab that spent casing. Try it again. In spite of my awesome trigger control and nerves not knowing if the gun was going to blow up, the gun didn't fire on this round and actually a couple of others. Nothing like hmm. pulling the trigger on a handgun hoping it doesn't explode in your hand. Maybe it's not going in the battery all the way. Here's a little hint that we thought about later. Remember, this gun was frozen solid with this magazine in it. Time. All of this ammo was underwater until the gun froze solid. And that lead under the slide stop was not working itself free. We actually noticed later, and we'll show you the video, the rounds that did not fire most likely were because they had gotten wet. The firing pin had struck the primer fine. It's just that the round itself never fired. All right, well. There's definitely some issues, but it does fire. And I think that if we put it back together again and put a plunger tube on it and a plunger, probably would fire okay. I don't think that that uh, dent in the slide is uh, any of the reason why we had some misfeeds in there. We'll find out. Here's a couple of things we noticed later on. Look at the little piece of lead that is still jammed between the slide stop and the frame. That piece of lead was what was slowing the slide down from being able to cycle properly, causing us some feed problems and some extraction problems. Also, remember when we were talking about those rounds that didn't fire properly? Remember, all of these rounds were actually inside the magazine and they were underwater until the gun was actually frozen right solid. There. The two bullets on the far hand right right here are two of the rounds that did not fire properly. Notice the indention on the primers. The other four empty casings to the left, those are all four properly fired casings from different guns on rounds that fired properly. Notice the indent on all six of these looks identical. These rounds were most likely wet and that's why they didn't fire. It's not the gun's fault. So we have to clear the gun on this one. Well, we have a job to do. After blowing this Rock Island 1911 up with a Remington 870 shotgun with single lot buckshot, we are going Three, to move on. Two, one. Next up, after we replace the plunger and the plunger tube on this Rock Island 1911, concrete. 